what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into the 34th installment of the Tuesday Track Talk featuring your Three Stones pit crew. I am Kellen, your Jackman. I'm your tire changer, Cam. And I'm your gas man, Cam. And we have uh, an interesting roadmap ready for what is going to be this episode. Uh, we have a few new series, quote unquote, that we'll be bringing to the channel. Um in those race previews so something you guys uh some new series to the channel and then we will get into what has been a wild world day week i don't know if you want to call it that in nascar so um it's going to be an interesting one it's going to be fun so sit back and enjoy it um and i hope we you uh find this entertaining but fellas well, what's new what are we up to Not a lot, honestly. I mean, I got another race in on the weekend. Uh, I know you had put a post out about how many miles uh, all of us have traveled so far. I just, if I remember right, I think I just eclipsed the 1,000-mile mark this weekend. Yeah, keep yeah. a little tally as we go. Yep, just eclipse the 1,000-mile mark. And that post was pre-Kakana trip for you, just so yep. you know. And so and I modified that, too, because I, I did it from when I left my grandparents' house to – Kakana instead. Got him. Um, Still close to 1,000 miles. Sweet. Sweet. Cam? Uh, nothing. I'm just got my uh, good weekend of racing. Um, so, yeah, it's good weekend of racing. Um, and, yeah, my brain's turning on uh, my whiteboard message for the week. And as you're <laughs> talking about that, uh, the miles I'm just thinking about putting a message up here that says uh do not do not let mangroves four eyes drive at night had <laughs> 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 I known we were gonna go down that route because um, oh. that will be honestly it's been almost a year but that will be I don't care how many memories and races we go to that drive that those two drive backs from oh, your lake that night <laughs> will yeah. live in infamy. So, um, but no, uh, yeah, good weekend racing, no shortage of news and, um, yeah, looking forward to getting into it. Um, so just as we're going here for those that are watching on the YouTube channel, as we kind of peek around here, we do have high limit midweek racing as we're recording here on Monday night. So um, just kind of a heads up as we're kind of scatterbrained a little bit here. And we'll keep you in tune as to what's going on in, in any of the, the big stuff here at the event. But just as you go. So, um, well, we're here to talk racing. We do this every week, so we might as well get into it, huh? Um, So... The first race recap here, this is going to be kind of a brief one, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. And you guys, when I put this in our sheet for the weekly plan here, you guys were like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. Um, but uh, so this is kind of, it, it, he took a lot of pressure to get this to happen. But if you follow any of Cletus McFarlane's stuff on YouTube, um, you remember on, Saturday night they had the mom pre so they have the the, the freedom 500 and uh the Indy 800 and they do all these crown Vic races and the wives and moms and women have been pressuring him to uh to do a mom's race so he broke he said yep go ahead so he found his little group of 11 co-workers racetrack owner nearby his wife uh, a bunch of people that got together um had 11 fans. It was a pretty cool deal. The live stream was free. Usually you have to do it. Um, that was uh, PDS Debt Solutions sponsored that for them. But um, qualifying <laughs> was uh, a husband's diaper change and then t time. And then they went to an invert. So start to finish, they had a doll on the table. They're on the infield. They changed the diaper and then they had an invert. Um, so that kind of started the night. Um but honestly, you know, for a lot of these gals not having any time in a quote-unquote race car with these Crown Vicks, um, there was really only one caution for incident. Like, it was it was 30 laps, pretty clean race. Um, 
one lost the right front tire, tagged the wall, and went bouncing out, literally out of the racetrack. Jesus. <laughs> bounced out of the racetrack. Um, and then uh, Ty Braun, who welds for Cletus, uh, his wife kind of got turned a little bit. She got spun around, tapped the wall. And then late in the race, there was really one other spin, and she just kind of all by herself. So um, it came down to a four-lab shootout, and funny enough, Cletus's wife, Maddie, ends up winning the race. Um, they were giving her a hard time because, you know, she had a private practice session on Friday when no one else did. And then he goes, so as of right now, you know, it's <laughs> open session for practice. <laughs> and, of course, all his guys that work for him were like, well, we didn't know this. What the hell is this? <laughs> and, um, but – no, it was just it was just cool to watch. Um, I actually watched it. It was uh, it was fun to watch the the guys that usually aren't on the camera with Cletus and George LS George were on the microphone, and all the guys were in the middle, um, kind of in the infield doing some commentary. But that was kind of my one my one off race recap for uh the week. Is that was uh, I felt like it was worthy noting on this Mother's Day weekend. I was just about to say. Obviously, we had Mother's. Mother's Day this past weekend, so we got to obviously thank the moms for, you know, the, everything that they did for us as kids. And, you know, for some of us, especially those in the racing community that do race, letting them do what they do and actually race, you know, however many weekends out of the year, too. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so what night was that race? That was Saturday night. So. If you're looking for a, uh, you can watch the stream. They posted a stream on YouTube. Um, on I oh, think I like a replay of it. Yeah, you can go ahead and thumb through a replay. But uh, and yeah, on that note too, somebody that um, you know, now we're just getting started in this uh, content creating world and you know, <laughs> whatever. But if somebody who you know maybe we aspire to be or something we could create but if you're looking for a great youtube follow who does loves race and does some absolute wild stuff wild stuff if you haven't heard of cletus um guy's just an entertainer and he puts oh. on all sorts of different races and obviously um what is it was it the feral or bagley what memorial bigly. the bigly bigly, the bigly. Yep. um but I mean, yeah. If you love racing, I mean, that guy's gonna give you a flip on his channel. You don't know what you're gonna find. Drag racing, the track that he owns, you're gonna find late models. I mean, so a lot of fun stuff. Um, I love the what was the a little while back? It was the stacker cars. Uh, oh yeah. The guy on the bottom was the gas, and the guy on the top was driving. Oh There's shit! That's like the old cruisers at Golden Sands or Marshfield. Yep. The old yep. cruisers. Yep. The guy in the bottom had the pedals. The guy on the top was the steering. Yikes! <laughs> so, um, yeah, great YouTube follow, and yeah. um, does a lot of racing stuff. But yeah, super cool. Super cool idea. Um, and awesome that he did that because, yeah. yeah, it's something unique and. Give the moms a time to shine. Yeah. So I just saw that and I watched it. And I, you know, honestly, we, you know, something a little bit different, but I felt like it was just worthy of notice as somebody who's been such an advocate for the automotive world collectively um, in terms of hosting a super late model race. And he'll have pro trucks every now and again. So um, even at his racetrack, he still does do some circle track stuff. So pretty cool uh, little deal there. But Let's get back into more of a little bit of our wheelhouse. Um, and this next one here, I think this fits right into the wheelhouse of being um, at the track for the weekend. Um, Tundra Super Late Models finally got the season started for them. Van Grohl, you were there. I'll kick this one to you. Yeah, so Tundra Super Late Models, for those that don't know what the series is, it's kind of just uh, it's a five or six race deal. It's a five race uh, season this year. Um the gist of it is supposed to be a super cheap series. You buy your, your tires at the beginning of the year. Uh, pit passes are available for a package deal. Um, but you could also split, uh, you know, races amongst teams. So, you know, the championship standings rather than a, an owner's championship, the driver's championship, you could actually share it with somebody else as well. You know, if you can't make one of those races, you can have a guy substitute for you 
and his equipment and all that, and it still counts for both of you guys. So it kind of splits the season up for the guys, and it's a little bit cheaper option for guys that want to run super light models around Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, they had their first race up at Wisconsin International Raceway this weekend. Uh, 19 cars showed up for this one. Obviously, there were a couple of good ones there. Ty Fredrickson, uh, Sawyer Efforts, Justin Mondike were all there. Dalton Zier was there as well. Um, you know, qualifying was pretty straightforward. Uh, as we got to the feature race, though, uh, you know, longer runs, there's no breaks in them as well. But you had a couple of guys that took a couple of hard hits. One, there was that one mid American that hit on that back stretch over there. Uh, hey, he, he went through a he went through the old full box like Johnny did last summer. The old yep. coming out of the sky. Yep. <laughs> and that's all I saw was I, I saw briefly sliding through the grass and then I just saw the foam blocks explode. Yeah. Basically. So driver's okay. All got good out of there. Um, obviously a wrecked race car out of that, but then yeah, Sawyer efforts took a hard hit too. I never heard what happened with him. Um, it sounded like something broke, but he took um, a right front hub, right front hub. Yeah. Cause it, I, I assumed it was one of those, like, Got loose to the left, overcorrected, and just went up into the raw, raw wall from there. That's at least what it looked like because I saw him just before he hit the wall. Yeah, it was a the post was a hub, but yeah, he he flattened the nose of that race car pretty hard. Which you know he is the defending champ track champion of that track. Uh, he won the Tundra race there last year, mm-hmm. um, so he was obviously going to be a contender for that one, and he got taken out early for that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, Haver, he had a rough day at it. He got spun a couple times, not all of them due to his own doing, but he had a little bit of a rough day. Um, ultimately when it came down to it though, um, guys were, were running up towards the front again, the cream of the crop kind of gets up to the top. Uh, Dalton Zier and Ty Fredrickson were there battling for the lead there. Yeah, there was, uh, some would you call it gamesmanship games games being played i should mention too and i've got the sheet here somewhere there it is uh it was eight plus eight was the invert eight plus the roll eight plus the roll because i know we had a discussion about inverts you know a handful of weeks back so eight was the the invert for this week okay interesting it was Uh, a 10 in total frederickson rolled a two Oh, he helped himself out there a little bit. Well, he made a comment too in his interview. He's like, "Yeah, I don't know. I I figured my luck was going to be just like Danny, and he always rolls high numbers." So, yeah, oh, ten ain't bad when he's he's eight plus. Yeah. So, um, but no, getting back to the race. Um, yeah, there were there were a couple cautions that it, it gathered the guys back up, and the high line seemed to work pretty good for a few of them guys. If you got a good jump, you can kind of get the momentum going into one. Yeah. Um, but some guys preferred that inside line. It's just there were guys, there were guys playing games. And honestly, and, and I told you guys this in the group chat, I don't think there was honestly, there weren't a single start that was good out of the three or four of them that they had. I don't think there was a single one. I mean, really, when you looked at them outside of the initial start. Yeah. They were Somebody would take off early. Somebody would take off late. Then you stack one line up. Then the other line struggles. And it just, there was a lot of foolery on that front row that was yep. just kind of, it, it just was checking the field up and it wasn't allowing the, the rows to roll off side by side like we always yeah. want to see. Um, And there's no particular one party to blame in either or any of the instances, it was just one guy was one restart, one guy was the other, then somebody just doesn't fire. It was just. Yep. And, and like one of them was, you know, Fredrickson, I mean, he jumped going into three yep. and then just, just took off or like Zier held back. And then, you know, Fredrickson would get out and Zier would catch him. And as soon as he caught him, bam, he was gone. It just. Yeah. Which it, it brought up a point. And I want to kind of pitch this to you guys, you know, obviously on the dirt scene, you know, world all us do this. I don't know if Lucas, Lucas oil does this or not. Um, but you guys could probably clarify that for me. If you jump a start, you go back a row. Yep. 
so the whole discussion was typically in the super late model scene, it's you get a chance, you get one chance at it, you do it again, you get sent back, sent back a roll. Yeah. Do you think that it just needs to be enforced more? Or what what are your guys' thoughts there? I I mean I'm a little bit more stingy on it, and you know I I'm kind of leaning towards I give you a well, I don't even think we need a warning. Like you want to play games, let's play games. Well, you wanna if you wanna wait, you wanna check the field up and wreck the field, well, just send them back a row. I yeah. I think get rid of the warning. Don't even give them the option to do it. Just you know what? They deem deem one party or or make it a roll. If it's a if it's a roll or whoever it is, send both of them back a roll. And that was a thought too. As I heard the officials on the radio after the well, it would have been the second to last one that if them guys are going to play games, I'm going to send them both back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit more stingy on it just because, especially at this level, yeah, you can't, you can't have a wrecked race car, and especially getting yep. ready for racing here in two weeks that we can't have that. So I, I say yank the warning and then just give them a roll. Sure. Don't don't even give them a chance. Yeah, I was gonna say, Kellen, when you get to this level too, um, you guys say it. Time and time again, uh, Van Gogh dropped it in the chat too. Play play dumb games, win dumb prizes. Yep. And you know, obviously these guys are all skilled at what they do. They're racing for a reason. But look, race it out. Don't we don't need the shenan- <laughs> We don't need the shenanigans from yeah. the jump and um checking up the field so and it, it, takes, it, it is a little bit of gamesmanship but like you said if you know you're gonna do some of this stuff and some of these guys like there's a level there's a level to it and i'm i'm totally with Kellen. if you want to do this and then you're gonna play these kind of games all right we'll send you back a row there was uh and and you know I think you guys have seen this as well, at least at least on the asphalt side up here. There is a restart zone at a lot of these tracks. Yep. Personally, I don't think it's very heavily fouled. It's mm-hmm. always just been rolling start. Everybody gets off at the same time. And you go from there. Yep. So, I mean, A, you could really enforce the restart rule. Or, again, you use that, you know, goal roll back if you play the games. You know, I obviously, I think on the, the asphalt side, you got to picture, you know, you got to follow, not necessarily follow, but you got to see what NASCAR does. They've yep. got the restart zone. It's very clear cut. You go in the restart zone, and that's what it is. You know, it got a little bl- uh, blurry there at Richmond a handful of weeks back. Yeah. And obviously, we don't have SMT data to, you know, be able to track that type of stuff. But I don't want that scenario to play out, too, where – they restart leader goes away. When you think you got to jump three laps later, you find out that NASCAR ruled it and you know, a bad restart. And now you're penalized for it where yeah. I think it's better to throw the yellow and yep. Your penalties are roll back. No. Yep. Doesn't yeah. completely ruin a guy's race. Yep. And that's what I think. I'm, I'm a little more stingy on it. When in doubt, give him a roll call it a day. Yep. That, then they just won't. You don't have that scenario. Yep. You want to discuss about it? We'll discuss. We'll discuss it after the race. Yep. Absolutely. So, no, I just wanted to throw that to you guys because, like I said, I think that was the big storyline that came out of that race. Other than you know the winner itself, um, when they did finally get restarted, Zier and Frederick said they were putting on a good battle. They raced pretty good with each other. Um, and then Zier just unfortunately broke something. There with what three laps to go or something like that. Yeah, I think it was he took he took the three to go. Um, and all all the restart games aside, once they did get rolling, they the guys were racing hard. It was good racing, yeah, absolutely. It absolutely was good racing. It just took a little bit to actually get that figured out on the restarts, but uh, no, they, they they're racing hard. Um, yeah, Fred, I never did hear what Zier broke. 
I heard, I've heard three different stories. It was either like a spark plug went, a wire went, throttle linkage broke, or uh, uh, fuel pump. I told you guys fuel pump. Um, yeah, like I said, I never really heard what it truly was. Um, but just tough break too. You know, he's running so good and just and just has that happen. Yeah, especially from the lead. Yep. Uh, but yeah, otherwise. Ty Fredrickson, he keeps he keeps impressing everybody. He gets his second win on the season. Um, he was fast time too, so he pretty much swept swept the weekend. Where it's just say, yeah, place swept Saturday. Um, and then I don't know if you guys saw Jeff Storbs post after yeah. that race, but he said WRR is traditionally not an easy track for rookies to figure out, and he dominated the week the the Saturday. So that's impressive in its own right. And he he made his way through the field fairly quickly. Oh, started, started tenth. tenth. He starting tenth in that field. I mean, it was all of a sudden he was in the top five, and he was gonna he was gonna find his way into yep making some noise in that feature either way. So for sure, yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's the old uh, tip of the cap there to the young stallion. Um, his impressive year continues, and At, you haven't been to WIR, but it seems like a very technical track. The bumps in one and two, yeah, and a little unique dog leg on in the front stretch. So, you know, for somebody that's his first time there, um, obviously, pops has got that thing wicked up, and he knows what to do. But it's one thing to have fast stuff, but then to go out there and execute it and have a complete day, um, yeah. The young stud continues to impress. And that was a point that I made too of, you know, Danny obviously knows how to set up a race car. He knows the track very well, but you still got to have a kid that could execute behind the wheel. Especially, I mean, they run weekly super late miles. Are you going to handful of weekly guys that were in that feature that are, we're going to have a say about that race as well. Yep. And they just kind of, a couple of them were just victim of circumstance, unfortunately, yeah. but. They they run supers weekly there, so it would have been no surprise had a weekly competitor had something to say about that race as well. Yep. Um, I gotta give a shout out here too, and I kind of talked to you guys about it too. Brock Heinrich. Yeah, I've always enjoyed it when he shows up to racetrack. Typically, he does pretty good if he travels outside of Wassa because he doesn't go very far outside of Wassa. But if he travels somewhere, it's because he knows he's gonna do fairly good there, and he loves WIR. Yeah, he led. The first third of the race or so. Yeah. Yep. And he even said on the radio, he's like, I gotta try I gotta get up on the wheel. It's fast, it's bumpy as shit, and I love it. He just loves yeah. to get up on the wheel of a race car. Yeah, yeah, he had, he had a good run. He finished uh second. second. Yep. Absolutely. And then uh Justin Mindyke third, uh Maxwell Schultz fourth, Alex Prunty fifth out of that race. Yep. So good race. No. Good race. Yep. Good race. Once we, get, once we got race, it was good. Yep. Um, uh, it's still going to be a theme of what can Fredrickson do as we go throughout the year. Can he keep that momentum going? Yep. So. Cool. Well, yep. if you guys don't have any final thoughts on Tundra, let's. Uh, we're going to flip the script again here, um, and we're going to go dirt super late model racing. Yeah. Um. We had the Lucas Oil Dirt Late Models in action at Fairbury uh, for thirty grand to win on a sixty lap feature. Uh, Cam, you're the Dirt Late Model guy. We'll kick this one to you to get going. And it looks like you're monkeying with your whiteboard there too. Eee. He's got a shit grid on his face. He's got something in mind. All right, so here we go. We got the whiteboard. Ty Changer's best friend is a huge. <laughs> Burger <laughs> fan. <laughs> oh, um, inside joke, but um, no, I was it, just from Cedar Lake when old buddy pulled up for anybody listening when we went to Cedar Lake. Oh, we, that guy. <laughs> Apparently, I've got two best friends. So we had to narrow down which one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, uh, Luke Soil Late Models. Uh, Pretty solid race. Um, 
uh, Devin Moran was pretty solid early. Um, and then Jason Ferger, uh, it was going to be who was going to be the first one to go to the top side early and start making some hay. And I think B-Shop was one of the first ones that um, chanced it early. And he went up top and was driving to the front, getting around. And then um, Ferger was probably the second one. Um, and he had a piece, obviously, and he drove it to the front. And, uh, yeah, it was a good show. And you could tell early on the top was coming in because J.D. is not somebody that is going to typically rip the cushion. And he was just glued to the bottom there. And I forget where he started, I think, inside row two. And it was just – he was getting – he was glued to the bottom. And Shepard and Ferger drove by him like he was sitting still. So, um the top was where it was at um, early, and then um, you saw once it, you know, rubbered up later on, um, top went away instantly, and guys were just hugging the pin or hugging the tires. Um, but well, that when you mentioned that Cam, when that top went away, it was literally like in the course of three laps, it was gone. Yep. I actually couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'm starting to wonder, like, some of those guys that were up there, I'm like, are they, they broke or they run something over? Um, But it was literally, like, in the course, and Fairbury is not a big racetrack by any means. All of a sudden, it was just gone. Um, uh, It was crazy, actually. I just watched it. I'm like, what? Whoa. Um, But that, that that's cool. That's cool to see that. It, it keeps the drivers on their toes. They got to find the moisture, and you, you got to be on it, and especially like that. It's no different than any other racetrack. There's going to go through a transition, and it just transitioned immediately and disappeared. Yeah, and I think that's such that's just an awesome part about dirt racing is, like you said, like it can flip like that. And in a 60-lap race, you know, early on, guys went to the top, and they could drive it to the front and drive by people like they were sitting still. And then literally in three laps, it's gone and it's a freight train to the bottom. So mm -hmm. um, it's cool that the track changes like that, keeps the drivers on their toes, but also um, you'd enjoy it if it could stick a little bit longer. Um, yeah. Because then those guys kind of get, it's the old train. And you got to get down there when you can. And if you don't, and you could even see RTJ when he was running down Moran. I mean, he was trying everything he could. And he, yeah. you know, one couple of those corners, he would try the top side and he would just lose ground. And then it was back to the bottom to try to get close. And then he threw a Hail Mary there, I think, on the on the last lap. And it was like, as soon as he went to the top, like, it was, Moran was gone. So, um, no, obviously a little bit of, uh, Tough luck there for Ferger, um, who shout out to him. Um he's racing he, the best of the best, and he 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 did something he doesn't typically do, and that was run up front. No, he and honestly, he put on a show coming to about 15 to go. He was he fell on the top and he was gonna live and die by that cushion, and he got the lead with about or he lost the lead with about 14 to go. Um, I see he led 20 some laps, I believe. Yeah. yeah, he led a good chunk of that feature. I mean, he was ripping that top shelf, he was just lights out up there. He was gone actually once he got by traffic, but again, that shelf just kind of disappeared. And he and good for him, he finished third on the night, so it wasn't like he disappeared. Now, we got to keep that in mind that he just didn't, it wasn't like he fell to the rear. The dude still finished uh, third on the evening, so. Fourth. Was it fourth? Fourth. Well, yeah, fourth. it was fourth. I missed our abbreviations in there. I but, apologize. Either way, it doesn't yeah, change. No, I mean, that. Uh, yeah, like you said, that doesn't change. That's a heck of a run in, in any sort of um, Lucas Oil field. Yeah, for sure. You guys touched on, like, the top going away instantly. You know, I it's – Obviously, a lot of it comes down to track prep, and we've seen good instances of good track prep and bad and instances of bad track prep. You know, I go back to the Chili Bowl, 
you know, prelim nights were all fantastic and everybody was really hyped for the main event. Got to that track prep, maybe wasn't as good as it could have been and got a, you know, again, a bottom feeder race out of that. We could look at a couple weeks ago with, God damn, I can't remember the race now, Jacksonville. Jacksonville to Wall Outlaws last week. They spent an extra 20 minutes to make sure that track was ready to go. And right at that 35 lap mark, that's when it really rubbered in and it got down to one lane. So you had really good track prep that kept that racetrack really racy the entire event. And, you know, it's, you, you can bet, you can bash somebody for taking a little too long on track prep, but you just get that little bit better chance of getting a good race out of it too. And I, Hats off to the Fairbury crew for having that thing ready to go like that. They scratched it. Um, so they actually used a brand new tool to work that track. It, it looks like a bottom plow for a, like a field. Sure. But it's a little bit smaller. It's a brand new little dealio. There's only like five or six of them around. Um, and they used that to, to work it in, and they sprayed it with a little more moisture, and they had at her. But, I mean, whatever they did, it produced. So I, I I like the stark contrast to the top just instantly going away. It just makes it interesting because all of a sudden you got to be on your toes that you can't just find your line and ride the rest of the feature. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us, you know, we can sit and critique, but – these tracks here, we're never going to get, you know, or rarely do we get, you know, a perfect track and everything is super racy. So they're doing a good, they're doing a dang good job. They're holding up is for the majority of these races. And it's, you know, it's hard to fault them. You know, they're doing their best. And for the, for the majority of it, it's, you know, you get a couple anomalies that, yeah, they're just a bottom feeder the whole race or, you know, it was it is only one lane, but I think for the majority of these races, we're we're getting some dang good racing. Um so and let's be honest, is this a little test and tune for the Prairie Dirt Classic? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. they they watched that play out and they said, uh, yeah, we're gonna put that one in the memory bank for potentially later in the summer. Yep. So as much as it is for, you know, as much as it is for drivers testing tune for the PDC later in the fall, same thing for the track track crew. No, we're not going to, you mentioned, you mentioned the new tool. Everybody knows not that now that they have it and how that changes the track. Yep. 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 Both on, the, both on think... the track prep and the drivers. Yeah. They said there's, what did they say? They said there's five of them. Five of them around, like five total in the country. That there's a couple places that got them. Um, I think they actually said the dude that created them is, uh, the Tims that they run up in Mississippi Thunder. Can it be your neighbor, Jake Tim? Yeah, yeah. They own either dad owns or promotes Mississippi Thunder, and they've got one up there. Um, that's kind of their jam that they use up there, and. The crew at Fairbury saw that and said they wanted to have one, so they got one. Hmm. So they said they just got it like a week ago, I believe, or so. So it's probably so it's just like a made-to-order, fabricated type of thing. Yeah, a little bit of a first-time alt type of deal, and it, it produced a hell of a race. So, hmm. And, you know, kind of wrapping that all up, uh, you know, we talked about it last week. Um don't know the official crew chief for Bishop, but another top three for him. So, you know, maybe the, the crew chief change um, that we talked about last week, is this the start of be going back to old Bishop and his rocket one days and potentially, obviously he's in good equipment and he's going to be competing every week. But, you know, in those rocket one days, it was, he was, dang near invincible so um looking you know, for that crew, win yeah and those crew chief changes can go one of two ways i mean a lot of times you can either you know some of them can go good some of them can not turn out um but obviously to start here um good run for him and that team so uh kind of wrapping up we can actually go through a little of the race results as uh go through the storylines 
Um, so that feature finishes up for 30 grand to win. Uh, Devin Moran, Ricky Thornton Jr., B. Shep, Jason Fager, Jonathan Davenport, Mike Marler, Nick Hoffman, McCready, uh, Mike Harrison, and then Cody Overton kind of rounds out your group that finished up at the top of that feature. So your boy Nick Hoffman hanging around there, Van Grohl. Yeah. Yeah, he just keeps building off the momentum. Obviously, he's a world outlaw guy, so that's just uh, you know, for fun deal for him. But a little testing to him for the PDC. Yep. Yep. Finished seventh in a solid car, solid field of race cars. Still a good Twitter follow. He did uh what the hell was it? He's like, I got a five hour drive back home or twelve hour drive back home. Q and A, what's on your mind? Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um Ben Grohl, I'll kick it to you. Let's kind of shuffle over here to like our, our first abbreviated main topic. Uh, why don't you go ahead and highlight some of the other race winners from the weekend? Yeah, so I know we kind of only cover a handful of uh, races that go on throughout the week, but obviously there's, again, we get into the heart of the summer here, and I think damn near everybody's up and running. I know we say that every week, but, I mean, that's trying and true. Um, USAC uh, Amazon Sprint Cars, they're racing this week. Uh, Logan CV got a win at Bloomington. Uh, let's see. I know there were somewhere else. There it is. Uh, and then Kevin Thomas Jr. Got the win at Tri-State Speedway, uh, as well. Uh, the trucks were racing. Ross Chastain got the win there. Uh, we touched a little bit on the Lucas Oil Dirt Series. Ricky Thornton won at Farmer City, you know, the day before. So we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, Extreme Outlaw Midgets were also racing. Ashton Tur Torgerson won, uh, at Humboldt Speedway, and then I know there was another one in there too. There it is, 81 Speedway, Cannon McIntosh, uh, one with the uh, the midgets as well. Uh, let's see, World Outlaws, they had a tough week. They got rained out all weekend, so they didn't get any racing in. Uh, and then IndyCar, Alex Palol goes back-to-back. -back. He won at the road course, uh, obviously the last race before the Indy 500, so he got his win there. Uh, William Swalich won with the Arkham Menard series. Uh, high Limit, Brent Marks won with the High Limit there. Uh, God damn it, I lost it. Tri-City Speedway won over there as well. So a lot of other racing going on. We also had some local series going on. Um, but that kind of covers the the touring series. Oh, one more. IMSA Sports Car Series. They're racing at Laguna Seca. Uh, the team, the, the number six team Penske Porsche stole a win. Uh the leading car got kind of drove off the track by a lapped car and the Penske Porsche team comes in, kind of swoops at their hundredth win in the series. Kind of a we'll monument to moment see. for them. We'll have to wait and see if that Penske Penske car passes tech. Yikes. <laughs> Too soon. Yikes. Uh, but no, uh, I see a lot of other racing going on this weekend. Um, just want to highlight a few of those, but uh, I think we also got, one more good one that we want to cover, and obviously we got to hit our bread and butter with NASCAR. Yeah, let's uh let's dig into this Darlington race, huh? This was it, this was a good one. It turned out, you know, the beginning of the race was kind of laps going by. Yep. But once you got a little bit down to crunch time, that's when things started to happen. Yeah, it was uh, it was, I mean, stage one was just a good big long green green flag run. There really was. I don't even. There was no caution. Turn laps. Stage. Yep. Yeah. No. Guys are kind so, of feeling it out. See what they got. Yep. And that's and that was the theme of you know a lot of the, you know keys to winning this race and whatnot was. You gotta you gotta change with the track. You can't attack it too much because if you start attacking it, that lady's gonna kick your ass and she's gonna put you in the wall. Correct. That of the old, the old Darlington stripes will reach out and grab you. That lady in black don't dance with just anybody. No. No. I mean, and really, after stage one, I mean, stage one is pretty calm, and then it just—I don't know if unraveled is the right word. Um, Guys there, picked up the picked up the urgency. Yeah. Yep. Correct. And William Byron kind of started that urgency with his lay his restart that he kind of sailed her off in there three wide and 
he pinched off Truex and Blaney and collected Busher. So that was uh, kind of a turning point in that race because those were three fast cars that kind of got collected in that mess. And Blaney was working his way up from starting in the back to kind of let pit yeah. strategy do its thing and was able to get up front. And he he obviously wasn't going to have a car that could win that race, but he was at least going to get a halfway decent finish out of it and just. He was in the top 10. Yep. It, a workman like D to get himself to that point and just kind of gets. Done. Yeah. Done through no fall of his own. And obviously he was, fr he was frustrated. <laughs> they boy you even mentioned it on the broadcast. He was, you know, we just had him calm down from, you know, going through, going through uh infield care center. And then he comes back out and he sees replay of the racket. He gets pissed off again. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, I think, well, I think what was it? William Byron, I think, you know, in his interview, he said in hindsight, had he known, his car was going to handle the way it did when he went three wide. Obviously, he wouldn't have done it again. But, um, you know, our good friend Ryan Blaney, if you want to listen to somebody entertaining um, during the week, um, that's rated R. Uh, Blaney's the spot to go. He uh, gets he gets I saw, I saw animated some, on the radio. Yeah, I saw some of his... Uh, um, I don't know what you want to call it, um, transcripts or whatever. Yeah, yep. And boy, he was looking to take a he was looking to take a couple people out on the radio. And um, well, I he came off a of pit road and he showed his displeasure to Byron. Yeah, yeah. And you know, going back to also the um, NASCAR Netflix series. Um, when they were getting to, you know, I think it was episode four and Dale Jr. was talking about, hey, you know, who's somebody that can get hot and win this? And he's like, Ryan Blaney. But it's if he can keep it together up here. Yep. And didn't entirely realize that. But the more I start paying attention, wow, buddy gets, buddy gets hot. On yeah. The radio, so <laughs> I, well, and I've heard that firsthand with uh, when, when him and Cedric got together, day twenty five hundred. When yeah. he was sitting in front of me right after pit road, and he got on the radio, he again he made it known that he was not happy. But yeah. he's admittedly said so. He's like, I get animated when I'm in the car. I'm in a whole different mode. But when I get out of the car, and I could be a completely different person too. So, yeah. So if anything, when you're in competition mode and you're locked in, and it's your livelihood, you know, it matters. It means it matters more. in. I'll be sure that'll make for great. Uh, and we saw that at the end of the race, which we can touch on that later, but we saw that as well. Yeah. Um, Kind of the next storyline, if you want to call it that, is I, Larson's spin alone, and he kind of, he got put in a wall, obviously, he broke the rear toll link. He had a whole bunch of other issues with that race car, but Kind of wonder if that comes from the damage of getting doored while avoiding that mess. Um, so he just kind of spins on his own. He's just done. Well, he cut in. He cut down that tire, cut down yeah. that left rear tire for him to spin. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it, it, they were mentioning again on the broadcast too that you could see the time starting to fall off for Larson. Yeah. So there was obviously an issue, and it just there it was. Guys, I got a quick bathroom break. <laughs> I can't hold it any longer. Jiminy Christmas. Um, but yeah, so Larson gets done, and then let's let's just talk about the last ten laps. Was it? Yeah, fifteen. The 10, 15. 2015, something like that. It, yeah. First off, Brad K and Tyler Reddick. That was a hell of a, a race for the lead. That's about as good as it gets. Correct. The boys took the gloves off and they were going to duke it out. And and it was only that one, that one coming out of four where they touched each other. And I know Brad probably hated that he did that because he knew that was going to hurt him. Yep. But that was that was a hell of a race for the lead. Absolutely. Um. Yeah they they went at it. 
the boys raced hard and there was no shortage of uh using fenders. If you want to call it that. Uh fenders, but also playing the arrow game. Yep. I mean, there was a little bit of the side draft going on and yeah, I was actually surprised how well Brad was able to hang on to the bottom there for a while. I was too. He just he kept side drafting, side drafting, and he was just there and Reddit couldn't clear, and then he just kind of sailed her off. Yep, got a got a little too hot in one of them, and just yeah, kind of sailed up a little bit. Well, then and then to that point, you know, Busher obviously hell of a reaction too on his part to rocket by the way that he did. Yeah. The old F1 slipstream almost. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. He just took it. Well, he took advantage of them guys checking up. Honestly, it was the same, it was the same deal as Kansas. Them two guys checked up in front of them at Kansas because they were, you know, arrow blocking each other, arrow drafting each other. And them guys behind them just got a run and just fanned out or, across them. Yeah. So it was the same deal there. Um, you know, he touched on Kozlowski maybe burning his stuff up from underneath. I was worried about that too, because obviously he had a really good long run car. Um, and I thought, you know, is he going to have a chance to come back? He, st- he was starting to show signs of coming back and catching him and running him down a little bit. But I think again, that arrow kind of came into play and just wasn't really able to fully, fully catch him. Yeah. But I was, you know, the Brad K, you know, when he was racing Reddick there at the end, it was just like, you know, like when somebody just keeps pestering you and you just get so annoyed that you just like give in. Yeah. I felt like that was him on the bottom with Reddick, that Reddick was doing all he could to get to get clear. And Brad just could not yep. and would not just go away. Just on the bottom, he'd get to him. He would side draft him on the back stretch, and Reddick could just not clear. Then, like you said, you know, at some point, um, obviously Brad's winless streak has been a topic of discussion every week. Um, when Brad got the opportunity and he sent her in there, I'm all that for was it. that was for the race win. Yep. Yep. Desperate. Not desperate, but just knew that's that's what it was gonna take. You oh, I shouldn't say desperate. He just wanted to win bad. And, and there's, and it's been obvious too, that he's been having really good cars. So he knows he can win these races. Yeah. So that's kind of the first instant. Let's, let's visit the second one. Uh, and the roles are reversed. The 45s on the inside of the 17. Um, And he sails it off in there. Right. Right idea, just was a little execution. too far behind. Yep, he was just too far behind to pull that move off. Good plan, poor execution. I mean, pretty much. You know, the other thing we got to think about here, too, and I think regardless of the slide job, I think, you know, it's a di- we could have a different story on this, but Busher was in the wall before Reddick got up into him. Yeah, the video did show a little bit different kind of to a certain extent so again whether arrow, i don't think arrow had much of play to do that but busher was in the wall and then reddick got into him yeah so both of them guys kind of sailed it off into there but i wonder if busher sailed it off into there seeing reddick doing that dive bomb yeah underneath him as well so trying to get clear to keep himself from getting wrecked Yeah, and, you know, one thing I was going to bring up, too, is obviously if you – it's a storyline, so I'm assuming a lot of people have seen this, you know, the conversation post-race between Busher and Reddick. But Busher mentioned Reddick's got a sticker on his car, and, you know – The race means more for Busher than it did for Reddick. Correct. In in that term. But to that point, though – you know, when you when you've got a sticker, you know, on your car already, and you're locked in. I mean, we've talked about it earlier in in other episodes. You know, these guys, they're gonna just do stuff that you you know, not wouldn't necessarily do because you got to win already. You're locked in. So, 
But I also think too, you know, what's better than one win? Two wins. Yeah. It's more playoff points. Yeah. And ultimately it don't playoffs or not. And when it comes down to it, all guys want to do is win. You try and win every single race. Yeah, for sure. But what heartbreak for Busher. Oh, two weeks in a row. Yeah. Has, has one of the fastest cars. They they will not be denied. They're gonna they have to win. They have to. They will. They'll they'll have a night that will finally work in their favor. They will. Yep. They'll who had, find a, who had RFK on our uh report cards? Did I? Is that me? No, it was me. Oh, it was you. Yeah. Well, you had S S H R. Yeah, I had S H R. No, because we each took a manufacturer. No, Cam. I think on, you I, had. I think I had RFK. I had Penske. No, just for shoots. You're and gonna games. look back, aren't you? I'm gonna just see what see what the expectations were for for the oh, year. There we go. Let's see. Should, Team report should, cards. There's mine. Slide, so Expectations and report cards. Yep, I did not have it. RFK. Okay, so expectation. Um, here's my expectations: forty-three top tens, thirty-one top fives, four wins. So, that one we're twenty-five percent of the way there. Both then, uh, in the playoffs, but neither one in the top in the final four. Well, hold on a sec here. I want to try and find. There's what I'm looking for. How many? Uh, how many top tens did you say? Between the two of them, forty three. Forty three. So we're at we're at twelve right now, top tens, and then how many top fives? Thirty one. Yeah, we're well. at seven. <laughs> wow. All right. High expectations for the RFK boys. Got that right. Holy cow. Scratch that. Well, we're twenty five percent of the way to our win expectation. But had we not had shenanigans last weekend, we would have had, we would have been at two hours and halfway. Yeah. But anyways. Um, but no, I mean honestly, that's that's just brutal for Busher to lose the way he did last week and then just tough. Yeah. But RFK, I mean, I think we can throw the that that question out there. Are they the strongest Ford camp? I would not disagree with that. Yep. I correct. They showed that at the end of the year last year, and I think they're just picking up right where they left off. Yep. I can roll with that statement. Especially with, and I'm looking at the point standings here, Keselowski went up four positions and Blaney dropped two. So Blaney is the highest forward in eighth place in the points right now. And then uh, Kozlowski and Busher are the next two, respectively, at 11th and 12th. Hmm. So they're, they're coming. Yeah. For sure. Um, go ahead, Ken. No, yeah. no, rip it. I was just going to say, so when we actually look at the race results, because there was a little extracurriculars after, let's go ahead and look at the actual race results. Um, Brad Kozlowski, Ty Gibbs, Josh Berry, Denny Hamlin, Chase Briscoe, William Byron, Bubba Wallace, Alex Bowman, Justin Haley. That kind of rounds out your top group there. Uh, Bowman, I was listening to the Fantasy Racing Preview. I They said, keep an eye on Bowman. And I was thinking about it, and I regret not putting him in. Yeah. I would say that's somebody who's uh, uh, looking at that list, two people. Uh, I still believe in him. Um, but one of my predictions was lo looking at the report card was Ty Gibbs was going to get a win. Um, oh, yeah. And so he's getting close. He was had speed there at the end. He was, you know, doing his dang to run Brad Kate out. But I do feel like Bowman, he's the only, obviously, Hendrick driver without a win this year. And he's just putting in like workman like performance. He's just keeping himself. Yeah, he's keeping himself in there. He's just it's not a lot of not a lot of glory, not a lot of you know headlines, but just workman like he just 
finishes in the top 10 week in, week out. He's, he's consistently running up front. And I'm glad you one. I'm glad you said that. Top 10s. Out of 13 races, he's got eight top 10s. That's consistency. That's tied for the most this season with his teammate, William Byron. Yeah. Yep. If he, he just needs, he, yep, he just needs that little more. For sure. Um, Justin Haley, good run for him, too. Yeah, that's a nice place finish for him. Rick and Ware. then, uh, you know, we keep harping on SHR there a little bit. Not the crew that you're expecting up front, but Josh Berry and, and Chase Briscoe. Two in the top five. Britt and Berry, 33rd to third. <laughs> yeah. Just yep, another workman's day there. Yeah, absolutely. I think oh. Gregson was in the top 15, though, too. He was running. Yeah, he was running up front there for a while. Um, yeah. I had the race results up, but I went away from it. Gregson finished 14th. So, I mean, another good run for him. Yeah. And he is, although he was buried, guess where he sits in points? He's got to be hitting 19th. I was going to say he's 19th. So, what we thought was potentially a death penalty early for Gregson and the 10 team, he is knocking on the door of being in the the playoffs. Yeah. Yep. For sure. But, uh, so those are kind of the race results. I mean, a little extra curriculars. Um, I mean, it was pretty evident. This is expected. Busher had some words for Tyler Reddick. And to put it lightly, he walked over and, and, Said I need you to be better, and Reddick said I effed up. So, yep. Uh, Busher also did, I believe, in his statement said this means war. He that sticker means more than it does to you right now. Yep. So I've saw I saw a couple uh, different verbiage on that. Does did he say this means more, or this means war? More M O R E. Because I saw another one that said that he said this means war, which no, meant. Because well, when he said that, he pointed at the sticker. We'll have to review the footage here in the near future. Yeah. but Either way, he was alluding to the, the win sticker, which meant more to the 17 team then. Yeah. Because he's not, he's technically still not locked in yet. Correct. So. I but that'll be once again, as we usually say here, that'll be something to keep your eye on for the playoffs. Uh, I just got to point this out just because I thought of this. I'm not saying that Reddick has maybe done some, you know, done some things on the track that, you know, he instantly regrets. And I'm not saying it's a trend of his, but I do go back to the Bristol dirt race one year where he did a slide job and he hit Briscoe. That was the year that Bush won it. I mean, it was damn near the exact same scenario. Yeah. So I just, I had to bring that up just because yep. I thought about it. Uh, high limit heat one rolling off. Uh, Courtney and Cole Macedo on the front row. McFadden. Kale There's Thomas. a lot of good cars in this one. Holy cow. Logan CD. Uh, Zeb Wise, Brent Marks. That's all one heat Rick race. Added. Yeah. It's a hell of a heat race. But uh, to kind of wrap up the Darlington thing, uh, we followed up with our good friend Jeff Gluck because he uh, was a little bit late on posting the poll. I'm like, are we going to get one? He's all over the place on social media there for a little bit, but we did get one. Um, and as of 6.30 on Monday night, uh, there's 13 hours of voting left yet, but uh, 92.6% yes, 7.2% no on 23,700 votes. We've gained 2,000 votes since you put that in. Okay, that was less than an hour ago. 
we'd, we've gained 2,000 votes. Uh, still same percentages pretty much, but. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I We forgot to mention this these past handful of weeks, but I, I'm glad I was able to see this one. Carson Holsevar, he put in his, his uh, two cents on Darlington, and this one's pretty simple. Uh, he just says, hi, Jeff. We sucked, but I clicked yes because it's Darlington. Thanks. <laughs> classic. Just so, classic. Here was uh, the final uh, note. I know I was. Uh, oh, we got a twofer. Twofer. Ooh. All right. So for those so for those that are listening to this, it says make Darlington the championship race. And in parentheses, throwback weekend rocks. Twofold. Okay. So I, I made that statement um uh, watching the race. Darlington's awesome. I think you could make the same argument for last week. I'm I'm thinking about yeah, I mean yeah, I guess you could, but I just think it's such a unique track. Oh, absolutely. Corners being it's a super technical track. The track eats tires. Um, it's fast. It's fast. The pit crew plays a huge part in the day. Like that's a total team. It it's got everything you could want in a race. Yeah. So I just threw that statement on there, and you guys can agree or disagree. And then also, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on throwbacks, and I th- personally am like, I love them. No. I have a hot take. There's a few throwback schemes that should be illegal to run. <laughs> I was going to ask you what. Uh, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you what one is your favorite one of the of the weekend. Oh, oh, my favorite. I'll I'll start with the disrespect. Three car RCR. That gold. That gold. I knew that one was coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it should. Moran should not be on the racetrack. And then to follow it up with those kind of results, what just? Yeah, I love um, that one. I love I mean, the... the throwbacks are kind of all over the place. You got guys going back to their late model days. You got priests going back to modified days. Um, you got the fourteen Briscoe going back to sprint cars. Um, you got uh the four Reddick did to Mershman. Yeah, you're going back to. Josh Berry did Rodney Childers late model days. Ross Chastain did an old Bush uh Bush uh light car. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Elliot I really did have. his Dale Jr. throwback. That one was pretty good. I'm right, uh, looking the at the spotter guy right cake, now. The Kyle Larson five. Yes. I was gonna say that one yeah. was that one was good. I like that the old. Good. I like the Bowman ode to Jimmy though. That was a sharp looking. That was good yep. to see that that scheme back out there. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, one that I got to give a shout out to, and I'm always I always do this just because I like when we throw back to some Midwest guys. Zane Smith throwing back to Dave Marcus. Nope. Yep. I got to throw that one back there. There's a story. I don't know if you guys know this, but it, I'm assuming you guys know that he always wore wingtip shoes. Yep. So he always wore wing tip shoes when he raced. There's a story as to why. And supposedly what it is is that he burned his feet one year in, a, in an accident. And the reason he wears wing tips is because the leather doesn't burn necessarily as much as some of the mother shoes. Mm. Especially that, like the soles. Yeah. So he wears wing tips because it kept his feet from getting burnt. Yeah. Ooh, somebody just went over. Who went over? Larson. Larson just went over. Damn it. This track is looks I know it's only he won, but wow, is it racy? Yeah, for sure. I was a little bit sidetracked on the Marcus fact. <laughs> um, so that kind of that kind of wraps up Darlington. I think you know the next segment here before we get into race previews. Um, we enjoyed this one so much last week that we're going to bring back the five minutes of fun in NASCAR here. Uh, the amount of news, change, 
stories. Everything. It didn't really have a segment for itself. So we brought them back to five minutes of fun and everybody's going to get uh, a few bullet points that we're going to talk on here. So, uh, Cam, you might as well go first. What do you got for us? Um, I guess I'll start with um, the first note. Um, McDowell, uh, his big news last week, um, which was interesting news. Uh, he announced he's going to the 71 Aspire next year. Um, so kind of a did not see it coming. Did not see it coming. And from what I've read, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like he said it was due to they didn't want to commit to him long term. Correct. Um, so kind of unfortunate. I feel like he's been with that team through thick and thin. He's built them to a race contender. Yep. Um, week in and week out. Um, and they've finally gotten to the point where they can start reaping the rewards of all the work he's put in and built that team up. And then to, you know, from his perspective, he said, from what I've gathered and insinuated is that they didn't want to commit to him long-term. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely a wild news. And then that'll spark, um, a whole nother conversation on charters. So, uh, whoever wants to take the next uh, five minute fun fact. Um, I want to, I want to piggyback off of the McDowell situation real quick. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this is going to be a crazy wild, uh, a crazy and wild silly season. And it's starting now. We saw it with JTG with uh, Ricky Stenhouse. Now we're seeing it with this. And that kind of leads to the next one with the SHR and their charter sales possible, you know, still in the conversation and that you know the most recent development out of that was is the entire team in the building for sale you know that's that adds a whole new mix into this whole charter discussion where guys are going to go especially when we've pretty much said i think we pretty much said that barry and uh gregson were lock-ins to stay at, at Stuart haas but if the entire team's up for sale where is that go? So, yeah. and I sent you guys, I sent you guys this little chart and I forget who it was from. I'm going to see if I can find it here, but they kind of predicted where everybody was going to go. Um, yeah. I sent one silly one season. Too. Yeah. I sent one as well. And it, and it, it halfway made sense. Honestly. One, one thought that I had there randomly as you were saying that the the doherty team in stenhouse was the one that i looked at was um earnhardt coming in and bringing back the 88 with those charters the doherty earnhardt team and the 47 and 88 and barry sliding over to the 88 so yeah i think we're just scratching the surface in what is going to be probably or arguably one of the wildest off seasons we were also kind of wondering where track house was going to get a charter from at the beginning of the year if they're looking to go to a three-car team, we might have just figured out where they're getting it from. And I also think another uh, suspicion is that I think 2311 is in the hunt for one as well. Is in the hunt for one as well. That I don't think Michael Jordan's going to sit back and be a, a two-car operation. They have a third car that they've announced that they're going to run. But don't be surprised if one comes open and he says, I'll take it. Yep. Which to that point, Corey Himes could be running in that 50 car. Yep. They announced that. Expected them. I would expect them to grab him up while they got the opportunity to do so. Absolutely. Which that'll so, be a jump going from trucks to trucks to cup if he does that. Yeah, yeah that's a it's a big but transition. Holsevar has done that as well. And he's not he, I mean, he's still got some things to figure out, but he's not been too shabby. Yep. Look at Zane Smith too, and he's been that's more yep. realistic of what it what to expect. Yep. Struggle bus. Yep. So uh next fun fact. Uh this came out even as of probably five hours ago. Uh 2025 will feature the in-season tournament for one million dollars. So They'll seed the 32 drivers, and they will basically head-to-head -head where you finish. You advance to the round, and an in-season million bucks. This was the Denny Hamlin bracket of last year. Yep. Is basically what it is. And he is waiting for his uh, his check 
for coming up with the idea. Crap. I love it though. I that absolutely so love awesome. it. Awesome. How awesome is this going to be? So not only on top of racing for the playoffs themselves, you're racing for a million bucks throughout the season. Yep. Uh, for those that maybe are a little more old school, have been around a long time, this is kind of, you know, it kind of brings you back to the Winston Million of old where guys were racing for a million bucks. Yep. So I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Obviously, you know, you can pretty much figure out who the 32 drivers are going to be in it, but how they will be seated will be very interesting. Yee, the seating is going to get to be uh... – be some hard conversations in those meetings. Well, it sounds like they're doing more stats than anything. It's going to be, it's purely going to be how, because it's based off of the three races before it starts from the sounds of it. So they're probably going to use like the metrics that they use for setting the qualifying lineups. They're probably going to use a lot of that. Fair enough. I would imagine so. Tyler Courtney, Cole Macedo, James McFadden, Zeb Boys, Heat won results. Brent Marks also transferring. Top yep. five transferred. Um, and kind of the last news in the NASCAR world, uh, this one comes on more of a Debbie Downer note, I guess, when we look at this. Uh Fox and has announced that Race Hub no longer after June eleventh. So they will Feature their last episode of June 11th. So your one-stop shop for anything NASCAR top three series shows uh, will no longer be um, airing. So they have informed their employees of that as well. So. I am going to throw my speculation out here because obviously we know that Amazon and TNT and all them guys and and CW are all going to be in the mix uh, for TV next year. They will get picked up in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Don't know how and in what capacity, but they will be picked up. I am, I will be pretty confident in saying that. Yep. Yeah, will agree. it be on, on, you know, cable TV or easy to see? No, but I could see, I still could see in some capacity. Honestly, you know, now that I say that and everybody forgets about this, everybody has the CW. Yep. Yeah. So I almost think that'd be perfect. Yeah. For sure. And I think it was Tommy Joe Martins. I want to say was at the CW a handful of weeks ago. And he was in his few meetings as far as like what they want to do with the broadcast and all that jazz. And he said he was really looking forward to what they were doing. Well, well, so. There you go. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. Yeah. So that's kind of your uh, silly season update. Uh, five minutes of fun facts. Uh, I think that's we more want five minutes, but who's take it, keeping track? No, it just it rolls off the tongue, nice. So it's the five minutes. <laughs> of fun facts. But uh, well, why don't we go ahead and uh, let's get into a couple race recaps here as we kind of previous come the latter part of this episode here. Race previews. You said Damn. recaps, my guy. Oh, previews. Yeah, Cam. Sorry. Looking ahead to the weekend, the week, what do you got? Um, obviously a big week for North Wilkesboro. Um, so uh cars tour pro and late model stock cars at North Wilkesboro. Uh increase in purses for both races. So um love that. Um and kind of a uh I don't know what do you want to call it, a prelude to uh, What's well, going to be a fun weekend for um, NASCAR series. Obviously, a lot of news with the, the repaved surface, um, a lot of upgrades to the facility. So, um, yeah, I guess just buckle up and um, be ready for it. We don't know. Hopefully, we with the testing, um, you know, what the service is going to do. But um, a lot of big names coming out to these races. And, um, yeah, it'll be fantastic racing and this is uh one of the few times that uh one of the crew members has already already got the race preview out on youtube so i don't know if this is a preview or a promotion um both <laughs> um so head it's over a promotion to the of the preview yeah. <laughs> yeah so head over to the channel um uh, our our tire changers got um the race preview out for it already and uh 
give it a listen, throw in a comment, a like, and um, yeah, it'll be a fantastic weekend for North, North Wilkesboro. Cool. Uh, you can catch all that on Flow. So if you look at yes, the on Flow. Uh, race preview number two, Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. They're back in action at Why Not Motorsports Park Friday the 17th, Saturday the 18th. 5K and 20K to win features. Um, last year was kind of a, an interesting one. They did the old Hunt the Front versus the Mississippi State Championship Challenge Series. It's a mouthful. Um, that was in June. So this is their one stop to Why Not Motorsports Park for the series for the year. So 25 grand in purses up for grabs for the weekend for the dirt super late models. All right. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about Kyle Larson in the past doing the double header for the Indy 500 and the Coke 600. Well, the first real big hurdles coming up. Indy 500 qualifying is this weekend. Uh, the gist of it is top 33 make the show. There's no provisionals, no gimmicks, just full on, full on speed. You either make it or you don't. Um, like I said, this is going to be Kyle Larson's biggest hurdle. He basically needs to be in the top 30 to guarantee a spot into the race is where he needs to qualify. Um, and, and qualifying is important as far as where you start 19 times. The winner has started from the pole in this race. So starting up front is crucial and it's staying up front, obviously as, as pit stops happen and all that jazz. So, uh, it is a two day show. Uh, the main show is on Saturday. That kind of gets the majority of the field set. And then Sunday has the top six gets reset. And then the last three gets reset. If there's more than 33, which I believe there's 34, 35, don't hold me to it, but there's going to be a couple cars going home. So we find all that out this weekend leading up to it. No pressure. Yeah. Like no. I said, top, top 30 is what Larson needs to get in. So and obviously based off of practice, he was looking pretty good. Yeah. So that those are kind of the big ones to take a look at. I'll kind of run you through the schedule here real quickly to see what else is on tap. Um, high limits racing as we speak. So this will be a recap recap for you guys next week or tomorrow. My gosh, I can't talk. Uh, cars tour as we mentioned, North Willsboro high limit. Uh, Outlaw Speedway on the sixteenth. World Outlaw late mail late models raceway seven. Uh, World Outlaw Sprint Cars Attica Raceway Park. Uh. World all, all eight miles go to Bedford. You got the USAC Silver Crown at Belleville. Um, all star challenge up here by us gets finally kicked off for their inaugural year. Uh, they'll go racing on the 17th at Golden Sands. Um, expect a big field for that, from what I'm hearing. Hey, it's we're hearing that's going to be a pretty big turnout in terms of car count, so that'd be pretty cool. They can uh, 20, 25, 30. Yep. Yeah. Paul Rice Sprint Cars, Lee County Speedway, uh, USAC NOS Energy Midgets, Belleville, Arkham Menards East, Flat Rock, um, High Limit goes to Fonda, NTT IndyCar, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for qualifying, as we mentioned. Uh, trucks go to North Wilkesboro, XR Super Series up in this neighborhood at Ogilvy for the Minnesota Mega, um, NASCAR Wheel and Modified, Riverhead. I mean, the list goes on and on. Midwest Truck Series back at State Park Speedway. Uh, Cup Series, North Wilkesboro for the All-Star Race. So, um, you want it, you got it. Sprint cars, late models, trucks, dirt, asphalt, wings, no wings. You want it, you got it. Where you stream it, it'll be there. So, the list keeps growing. I love this time of year. May is so fun. I love May. No. Oh. Well, let's should we do a little fantasy recap. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I'm actually pulling it up here right now. I think it was just kind of a it was kind of a mad weekend for everybody, honestly. Yeah. Gas brand camp, you came out you came out good again. You got you gained ten points on everybody, at least. You were the top dog this week at 199. Uh Kellen, you were at 189. And then Cam, your lady was at 178. I was at 155. Callan, your lady was at 148. Kurt Bush Stan was at 133. And old Dietz, he was uh he's been on a rough patch here lately. He got brought up the tail at 105. <laughs> yeah, Cam, you're yep. Reeling us in. <laughs> he's got him hooked. I'm just ain't reeling him in yet. 
Yeah, I'm to the point. I made the unanimous decision not to give away my strategy, but uh, it's effort. Uh, it's goal time. Um, <laughs> as we would say, in, as we would say in the race race world, using my shit up. So, oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna get there somehow, and when I get there, I'm gonna have nothing left. But at least we're there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh man. I don't remember how the All Star race played out last year, whether it actually counts or not. So I guess we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Um, overall, though, I'm still your point leader at 2,446. Uh, Kellen, you're back by 55 points to me. No. And then Cam, you're back 113 points from Cam or from Kellen. Sorry. No. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, you keep reeling, reeling us in, and we better be careful here. We might be talking about another position change here. Hey, that and the 40 point pickums can swing everything real quick. Yeah. The Got Reddick that right. Thing actually botched my lineup. I had Reddick in my lineup and I had him on the pickum. So that was an unfortunate turn of events. But And I had Larson as well. That's okay. I didn't have either of those guys. Man, oh. That tears the guys heart apart when you look at the lineup and you're like, wow, I really don't want Larson to wreck, but for the sake of fantasy, yeah, he could he could get a loose wheel on the lap to an idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's make some all-star race picks. Well, I was gonna say, let's recap last week here, real quick. Uh, we did have a race winner on our hands. Somebody picked the race winner. I think I would have to look back, but I wonder if that's the first time we've done that this year. I think so. We've been close. We've been close. I'm pretty certain that's the first race. No, nope, nope. Cam did it last week. He had Larson. Oh, God damn it. Stole my uh, thunder. Yeah, I would have to probably look back. That might be a good thing. I'll have to see if I can put that together. How many race picks we've gotten so far this year? For Brad, um, Brad Kasich, I can't even be upset that Kellen picked that. No, yeah, right. I think we were all happy for that one. Yeah. Um, otherwise, looking at the old world point standings, tightened up a little bit. I'm still in the lead, but I'm only ahead by 11 points, and then Kellen's behind by 15 points for me. So we're, we got a 15-point gap from between the three of us. Yeah, that's uh, that race is tightened up there. Uh, a little <laughs> 430, 419, and 415, so one <laughs> One or two bad weeks here is gonna it's gonna be detrimental <laughs> to that. It's gonna shred the season is what it's gonna do. Yeah. Yep. So yes, yeah, so let's make some uh, all star race picks. Uh it picking order this week is going to be uh, Cam, myself, and Kellen. So Cam, you get first dibs here. Um, just give me one second here. You're doing the same thing as I am. Then get get a quick. Get a quick look at it. I'm gonna go. Remember, gonna... you gotta pick somebody that's in the race. Yeah, I'm gonna go Chase Elliott. Oh man, little Why am I not... there between Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin because Denny won the clash, so obviously he's got a good short track package. He didn't have a good short track package here last year, though. Oh, P13, a lap down. <laughs> Why the hell can I not get what I'm looking for on here? Well, I guess I'm just picking blind then. Well, Pro um, Saint, Saint racing this weekend. <laughs> golly. I mean, I know who I want to pick, but I can't guarantee. Well, no, you know what? I can guarantee that he's going to be there. Oh, you're taking Give me Kyle Larson. Ooh, he's going to be tired out, so I'm not too concerned. Wow. Well, you know his strategy. Just look at the previous year's race winner. Yeah, no kidding. Rocket <laughs> science, that is. Yeah. Huh. Cam, who did you pick again? Uh, Chase Elliott. That's right. Sorry, I was doing research and I kind of blanked out. I'm filling them out right now. All right, Kellen, who you got? Um, I, I think I'm going to have to reach a little bit on this. Um, Oh, love the sound of that. God dang it. You know, I'm looking at a guy that if you picked him, I would not be surprised if you picked him. 
I'm looking at these lists of short track guys, and yeah, he is going to have to find his way in. This is risky. This Ooh. could bomb the season. <laughs> I'm going to take Ty Gibbs. Ooh, not where I thought you were to go with it. But well, I'm looking at this list going, I got Baba, Raddick, Briscoe, Blaney, Suarez, Jones, Gibbs, Logano, Chastain, Bell, Hamlin, Truex, uh, Barry, Busher. Those are my other options. I just – no Ty Gibbs ain't afraid to move somebody is what it comes down to. No, he's no, not. He's, he's solid on those short tracks too. So that's my, that's my hot one for the week. Uh, oh, I was going to say a guy that I, I was kind of thinking that you were going to go with. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if it would have been a good pick to go with. I was you thought you were going to go with Josh Berry. He's a little bit more of that late model stock type of race. But, again, got to remember, repave. Nobody really yep. knows what we're dealing with. So, well, that – that wraps up what has been the 39, 34th rendition of this Tuesday Track Talk where we bring you all the latest and greatest in the racing world. Um, as always, we appreciate the likes, the listens, the comments um, as we do. So, if, again, if you're looking for coverage on something, don't be afraid to shoot it our way. Um, we'd be more than happy to. Um, but outside of that, stay on the lookout for the race previews. Um, and as always, we'll see you next week.